Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're gonna do the real review of the LG G3 Alright now for everybody that's new to my channel when I say real review I'm not trying to say that other people's reviews are fake. No, that's not what I mean when I say real review I mean that I'm a real consumer. I bought this phone with my own money. I don't work for LG I don't work for none of these other companies. I'm giving you my real unbiased opinion So that's what I mean by real review all right, so let's get right into it. Now, as usual, any phone review I do, I always like to talk about everything I don't like first, and then we'll talk about everything that I do like. All right, so let's get it popping. First off, let's talk about what I don't like. Number one, the speaker on the back. Now, I'm not a fan of phones with speakers on the back. I think that's the worst placement for a speaker. Either the top or the bottom or the front is a better spot for a speaker. Naturally, when you, you know got the phone on the table like this, it's muffling out the sound and especially if you got the phone on the bed or something on the cloth surface that's you know the cloth surface gets right up into that groove it's gonna muffle out your speaker now LG says that the speaker has a one watt you know boost and all of that look if you watch any of my videos you know I don't like talking about specs and all that I like talking about real world you know usage and regardless of what they say a one watt or, you know one watt boost and all that this speaker on this phone is kinda whack All right, it's not garbage not the worst speaker out but there's no bass on this, and the speaker is not that loud, and it's on the back. So that's like a, 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 a triple threat of negativity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not that loud, it's on the back, and it's no bass. So I'm not really feeling the speaker on this phone, and I'm definitely not feeling the speaker placement. That's number one. Next, here's a problem with the display. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm digging the quad, you know, the quad UHD display, all that, you know, mumbo jumbo, 4K, 2K, PPI, look, we're not going to talk about that. The display is beautiful, but what good is that when you're using the display for a while and the phone starts to heat up and next minute you get that message that your phone is about to turn off? This happened to me about three or four times already. If you run into display really bright, especially when you're outside. Now, this phone definitely doesn't have the best outdoor viewing angles, so you're going to have to turn the brightness up. Now, if you're rocking full brightness outside, like I was doing the other day, the phone is going to heat up. It's going to get mad hot, and then you're going to get this message saying that the phone is basically getting ready to turn off. So I'm definitely not feeling that. I never had that problem with none of my HTCs, none of my Samsungs, none of my Motorola's. This is the only phone that I, ha that I had that problem in the last couple of years, and I'm definitely not feeling that. Especially now it's summertime, so I'm outside all the time. You know, I need that display on brightness. So I'm not really feeling that heat up issue. It is what it is. The display is beautiful though, but it just heats up. Next, battery life now. Now don't get me wrong, the battery, 3000 milliamp, this is a nice size battery. On standby, the battery is ridiculous on this. Like you could go to sleep with 70% and wake up with 65%, a full night of sleep. So standby time on this is ridiculous. Right? Matter of fact, it's ridiculous. Not ridiculous, ridiculous. Right? That's two different words. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Standby time is great. But if you're an internet warrior like me and you're using the phone all day with heavy usage, you're, going, you're only going to get about four hours out of this phone. Now, look, I watch all the reviews on YouTube. I'm just like y'all. I don't just watch one review. I watch all the reviews on something before I get it. And I hear these cats talking about, oh, yeah, they're getting eight hours heavy use, 12 hours heavy use. Dog, that's impossible. All right, that's not happening. Now, I don't know what your definition of heavy use is, but for me, I'm an online warrior. And what I mean by that is I'm on YouTube all day long. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Foursquare, all day long. I'm watching videos, watching music, you know, hitting Vine up, hitting World Star Hip Hop, all day long. Now, if you download the stuff and using a phone, and not to mention, we're not talking about battery saving tricks. Now, you can put battery saving tricks on where you turn off the vibration and you're not getting your emails pushed the way, you know, uh, um, uh, automatic push, you, you know, you're checking for emails every hour or every hour and a half, every two hours. I'm talking about the phone on maximum status. All right. Now, I like to use my phone on maximum status. When I get an email, I want that email right now. Okay. On all of my email accounts, when I touch the screen, I want that vibration. I want maximum vibration. I like to use my phone at all maximum settings. So that's what I mean by online warrior internet B status. You're only going to get about four hours. All right. Now, is that a big deal? Not really, because this phone has a removable battery, so you could always order a couple of extra batteries. And y'all know I'm the battery pack king. I got a thousand battery packs. So that's not the biggest issue in the world. But just to be clear, for all y'all cats that think you're going to buy this phone and you're going to put the screen on full brightness and put all your settings on, on maximum settings and you're going to get 12 hours heavy use, 
Nah, dog, it's not happening. All right, four to five hours heavy use. I'm telling you, when you when you're in your bed at night and you download the stuff and you watch them, you'll see the battery draining right in front of your eye. All right, you're gonna have you're gonna be forced to turn the screen down after about an hour if you want to save that battery. So I'm definitely not feeling that battery status. Uh, whatever it is, what it is. Next, on the camera, the nighttime pictures aren't that great, and that's the problem with a lot of these phones out right now. When you're taking pictures at night, it's not that great. Now, some people think that's not a big deal. You know, you're taking pictures, you know, most of the time in the daytime or inside of places with lights and all that. But for me, I'm out in the streets all night. A lot of the good action happens at night. So last night, I tried to take a picture, you know, in the middle of the night. The pictures come out very dark in this. Now, it's not the worst. I've seen worse. Won't mention any names, but I've seen worse. But the pictures at night, they're not that great. And when you're taking video, the sound on the video is not that great. All right, now watch my camera test for yourself and watch it against the HCC, watch it against the Galaxy Note, watch it against the um, S5, and you'll see the difference, even the OnePlus One. The camera on this, the video camera is banging, but the sound quality could be better. And last but not least, the thing I don't like about this phone, now I tried to get used to it, I went into this phone with an open mind, I just can't stand the buttons on the back. I just don't like it. Now, it's not the worst, it's not, it's not unusable. You know, it's a learning curve. You're, just, you're definitely going to have to take a couple of days to get used to it. And especially if you're a dude like me that rock multiple phones all day long, you reach it for the top or the side for your power button, you're going to get, you know, you're going to have to take that learning curve to get used to the button on the back. Now, you can do the knock feature to turn the screen on and off, but only one problem with that is if you have a full page of apps like this, there's no way to turn it off. So I had to leave one screen with a blank spot so I could turn it off. Now, the knock feature works perfect. No hesitation, no lag on that. But, um, like I said, you're going to have to leave one spot if you want to turn that off. Now, I'm the type of dude, I like leaving my phone on the table. Now, I don't know where you work at, if you're somewhere that you're not supposed to be using the phone all day. You know, a lot of people work at jobs that they don't want you to use the phone all day. Now, with me, I don't have that problem, but I just like having my phone on the table, and I like doing stuff on the table. I'm always raising and lowering the volume. You know, if I make a phone call or something, I turn the volume down because I get I get an uh, awful lot of notifications. I get a ridiculous amount of notifications. So during the day, plenty of times, if I'm on an important phone call, a business call or something, I got to turn the volume down. So now I got to constantly pick the phone up to turn the volume down. You know, so that's kind of annoying. Not the worst in the world. Look, you'll probably get used to it. Especially if this is your daily driver, you're definitely going to get used to it. But if you're walking around with a bunch of phones like me, or if you know, you're switching phones every day, it, it, it gets annoying after a while. So that's just my personal opinion. I'm not really feeling the buttons on the back. Now, they are nice. They do have a nice click sound to them. If you can hear that. It does have a nice click sound to it. And one thing about the buttons on the back, it does make it easier to take a screenshot. So when you want to take a screenshot, you press volume down and power together. It's a lot easier with the back of the button, with the back of the, <laughs> with the buttons on the back of the phone. Just press it down easy like that. No big deal. All right, so that could go either way. Buttons on the back, that's, you know, it's user choice. You know, maybe, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Me personally, I just don't like it. Now, let's get into everything about the phone that I do like, which is a bunch of stuff. And I try to, I'm going to try to get through this a little bit quicker, but y'all know when I say quick, that means 30 minutes, so... Pause the video, go make yourself a drink, and come back, because you know we're about to get busy. Things I like. The build. Now, the phone is plastic. We all know that. The phone is plastic, but it has that brushed aluminum look to it. Alright, so I'm definitely feeling that. Even though it's plastic, I just like the look of it. I like the feel of it. It feels nice in the hand. 5.5 inches to me, that's a, that's a perfect size phone. Now, a little bit bigger, I could go with but um, definitely not smaller. Like I'm definitely don't. I'm definitely not feeling anything under five inches right now. Five point five to me is a nice sweet spot for a phone, especially for a dude like me with big hands. I can reach the whole screen easily. I can reach the drop down menu easily, no problem. So I'm definitely feeling the build to this phone. It has, and especially the gold color, has a nice you know, light reflection off of it in the daytime. It looks nice. All right, so I'm definitely feeling the build. The display. Next. Now, the display on this, like I said, we're not going to get into PPI and all of that. The display on this is a go. All right, it's a beautiful display. Now, one thing, I didn't want to mention this on things that I don't like because this goes both ways. This is something that I do like, but one thing I noticed, even though the quad UHD display and all of that, look, one thing about the white colors on this, they come out cream sometimes. You get like a pinkish hue. You get like a creamish kind of hue to it. It's not... 
it's not as you know all that as it as they make it seem to be like you're going to be looking at some hd ultra display and you're going to have your mind blown now when i first unboxed the phone yeah it looked great but after using it for a couple of days and putting it side by side with my m8 and my s5 you realize a few things super amoled displays to me have the best blacks now y'all know i like the dark backgrounds and the black backgrounds on this, the black background comes out a little bit washed out. That's why I'm not even rocking the black background. I'm rocking a, um, a whip background instead. Because if I did a solid black background, the black is a little bit washed out. And the whites come out a little bit creamy. Like a creamy color white. Now don't get me wrong, it's banging. Beautiful display. When you're watching videos and movies and all that, it's beautiful. But all that PPI stuff, you can't really see with the naked eye. And a lot of these apps and wallpapers and games and all that, they're not designed for that yet. So you really, it really doesn't matter. 1080p display is good enough. So this is that's more like a marketing gimmick. To, you know, I got the quad display now. You know, you feel like you're on top of the food chain. But really, you know, it's really no difference, to, especially to the naked eye. You know, especially like when you show somebody who don't know, if you just show them the LG and you show them the M8 and the S5, a lot of people are going to pick the S5 as the best screen. Now, I did that little, I did that, I was going to make a video about that, but whatever. I had a little, um, at work, I did a little, a little contest, not really a contest, a little survey. And I was showing people, I'm like, which screen you like better? A lot of people pick the S5 as the best screen, believe it or not. It is what it is. But I'm definitely feeling the display, like I said, 5.5 inches. One thing that's hot about this is how they was able to fit the, you know, because of the bezels, how they was able to fit the 5.5 inch display into a phone that's pretty much almost exactly the same size as the M8. That is a win. All right, look at the difference. You see the difference in the screen size? So what, now keep in mind though, this has speakers on the front, so you can't knock them for that. But um, be, to be able to fit a 5.5 inch display in a phone that's the same size as the M8 and your S5, that's a win right there. Next, the camera. Now, the camera on this takes some great pictures. Like I said, as long as they're not night pictures, cameras, I mean, uh, pictures in the daytime, they come out beautiful. Let's take a quick picture. Now, this also has that laser focus, which makes your pictures come into focus extra quick. Especially if you're not using the flash. Look how fast that focus is. You can take beautiful pictures. You can do the burst shot. You hold down the you hold on the camera. Now I got the volume off so you can't hear it. But you hold on the camera, you get burst shot. What LG did on this camera too is, you know, compared to some of the last LG phones that was out, they simplified it. So now it's real simple to use. When you go in your settings, real simple. You know, I, I hate when you pull up a camera and it has a thousand different settings. If you're not big into photography and all of that, you're not gonna know what all those settings is. This is real simple. Change your resolution, real simple. You could change, you, you know, you could have the, you know, take pictures just by saying cheese. You could do the timer for your selfies and all of that. It also has a nice way to do um, selfies. You put your hand out, it'll recognize your hand and you make a fist and it'll take a selfie. That's a nice little feature right there. Got all the standard modes. Magic focus, which is um kind of like when you take the Instagram pictures and you blur out the background and all of that. You know, that's a cool little kind of gimmicky feature. I took some pictures with it. Not the best in the world, but not the worst. Like I said, nice for Instagram. You got panorama and you got your dual shot so you can be in the picture too. You know, take a picture of you and your girl at the same time. You be in the front in a little box. She be in the back. You know what I'm saying? So the camera on this is pretty good. Real simple. I like the simple UI. Not too much fanciness. Not, you know, not too much settings to adjust and customize that um, make you end up messing up your picture. You know, when sometimes when there's too many settings, you start playing with this, start playing with the white balance, start playing with the ISO, start playing with the macro and all this stuff. You don't even know what it is. Start playing with all that, and before you know it, all your pictures coming out mad washed up and look like they've been through 10 Instagram filters. I hate that look. So now with this camera, the pictures are real simple and, uh, you know, real simple menu. So you just point and shoot. And like I said, with this laser focus, that works nice. Mm. Am I going to say this is the best camera? Personally, I like the Galaxy S5 camera a little bit better, but this camera is a base this this camera is a beast for point and shoot. If you're a person that you just want to get it phone, get the camera out, point and shoot, this is what it is. You outside, you see something popping off, pull out your phone, pull out your camera, point and shoot. No settings to adjust. So I like that. Next, removable battery. We just talked about that. That's a win right there. Now, y'all know the M8 this is one of my favorite phones, but the downside to this phone is no removable battery. All right, no removable battery at all. To me, 
I, you know, it depends what it is. Now, you might be the type of person that like to walk around with a portable battery charger, even like those small ones, like y'all see me do that, um, that RAV Power, the, the Luster joint, the one that's like only bigger than the chapstick, even stuff like that. The other night I was at Coney Island. Now, when you go on somewhere like Coney Island, Great Adventures, Action Park, the last thing you want to be doing is carrying around a whole bunch of gadgets. So I would like to have just put my phone in my pocket, take a spare battery, put that in my other pocket, and just bounce. Because you know when you're somewhere like Great Adventures, Coney Island, you're taking mad pictures of the kids, you're taking mad pictures of your girl, your boyfriend, whoever you with, you got pictures all day, and before you know it, your battery's going to die. And you know, that's an all-day event. So instead of carrying a battery pack, now with this phone, you could just get another battery, charge it up, and have two batteries. And the battery on this is extra slim, so it's not going to take up no space in your pocket. So removable battery and expandable memory, that's a win. Now, I got a little stink 16 gig memory card in here, but you could get a 32 gig, 64 gig, even that big dog, 128 gig. You know, change the memory of your phone, that's always a win. All right, and instead of being stuck with a 32 gig or stuck with a 16 gig phone, now you got expandable memory, that's a win right there. Next, the keyboard. Let me pull up the keyboard real quick. Let me get a, let me get a message. Let me show you how this keyboard. Now, the keyboard on this phone, to me, is one of my favorite keyboards, and I'll show you why. There's a feature on this keyboard that lets you adjust the size of the keyboard. You see how big my keyboard is now? Now you could go to, I'm not going to do this because I'm, I'm realizing this video is going, going kind of long. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but just know you can do it. You can adjust the height of your keyboard. All right, so now if you're a dude like me that got big hands, this is much better than having a keyboard that's this big. Now look how big this keyboard is. I can type mad fast. And also, one thing now, it's going to be hard to explain this, but... This LG phone has best has one of the best keyboard responsivities that I've seen yet. And that, I don't know if that's a real word or not, but um, it, it is what it is. Only people that will really understand this is people that use an iPhone. If you use an iPhone, you know the iPhone keyboard, when you type on it, it has a different feel to it. It just feels like extra responsive. This is just like the iPhone. This is the closest I've seen to iPhone yet. Now, the worst is the Galaxy. The Galaxy series, sometimes when you type and you feel like keyboard lag, you're typing fast, it'll lag out a little in between words. The HTC M8, the keyboard is great, but this one is the best one that I use yet. As far as responsiveness, this is the best one that I use yet. No hiccups, no delays when you're typing. So that's a win right there. I'm feeling the resizable keyboard. That's a go. Next, multitasking. Now, this phone definitely... Is a beast when it comes to multitasking because you could do the split screen similar to how you could do in the galaxy phones you could do a split screen so now i could go i could have youtube let's put a youtube at the top and we'll put um let's try a gmail at the bottom now my hands is kind of sticky right now now you have both apps open at the same time so now i got a youtube and i got gmail at the bottom now, same thing like with the Galaxy phones, you could swap these. You could take it back to the menu. You could close them out, or you could go full screen. All right, so multitasking on this is a win. What more can I say? What, what, what do I need to say about that? It's multitasking. Two apps open at the same time. Now, you can't do that on your OnePlus One. You can't do that on your M8. So, you know, that's a cool feature right there. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's, that's a good look. IR Blaster. Next. Now, this phone has the IR Blaster on the top. Now, I know what you're saying. A lot of these new phones coming out, basically all of the new phones coming out having the IR Blaster, but not all of them. Not the OnePlus One. Certain other phones that's coming out don't have that. So what does that mean with the IR Blaster? Now, you see I got my TV remote control set up right here. Now, when I do my drop-down menu, it looks cluttered, but you don't have to have it like that, but I like mine's cluttered like that. I like the Q-Slide apps. So now, look, when I pull my drop-down menu, I immediately have my calculator, my calendar, messaging, email, all that stuff right there. Then I also have my remote control, which works. Now, I'm not pointing, I'm not facing the TV and all that, so of course it ain't going to work now, but got the remote control in it, and it works. So IR Blaster comes in handy. That's a good look right there. I know a lot of other phones have that, but the LG has it too. That's uh, this important stuff to consider when you're buying a phone. You know what I'm saying? This is important stuff to look at. Next. Let's talk about the CPU. Now, like I said, I don't talk about specs and Snapdragon 801s and all that, but basically the CPU on this is a go. 
It's extra fast when you're browsing web pages. Now I'm in the middle of uploading a video right now, so my internet connection is kind of slow. I'm actually uploading two videos. I'm uploading the 4K camera test and this um what else? I did? I just I just did something else too from a couple of days ago. I'm uploading two videos, so that's why my 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 internet is going kind of slow. So no reason for me to demonstrate, but basically when you're using the web, web pages, they open up extra fast. You can watch videos on them. Everything plays nice and smooth. What can I say? The Snapdragon 801 is a win. You know, it's the latest Snapdragon out. So if you buy this phone, you're getting flagship specs. You know, you expect that from a flagship, and it delivers. So nice, smooth internet operations. This phone is a win. Next, call quality. Now, the call quality on this is pretty good. It's extra loud. I will say that. You know, on your Galaxy phone, you can have that volume boost. You don't even need that on this. Call quality is mad loud on this. I never had a problem with that. Call quality is a win. One thing I will say is notifications, though. Now, the notifications, and that has to do with the speaker, sometimes the notifications come out low. Like, when I, like certain notifications, I have the same ringtone for certain apps on all of my phones. So when I hear that ringtone, I already know I'm getting a Voxer. I already know that if, you know, if I'm tracking a flight, that flight just landed. I like to use certain ringtones. And I notice on this phone... Certain ringtones don't play that loud, but they do play loud enough to hear. So it's loud enough that I'll say I like it, but not, not loud enough that I'll say that this is the loudest in the world. Definitely not. Next, customization. Now, that's one thing that LG, they know how to do, is customization. All right. Now, you can customize everything. Look at when I turn the screen off on this. I'm using the black hole effect. But you can use the TV, like the old school TV effect. And even when I turn it on, you see I'm using the soda effect. Now I got the volume down, but you see how it's soda? And when you open it up, look at that. You see the background? When you open it up, it's like pssst, like a soda cap, like a like a soda cap opening up. That's hot right there. And when you go to settings, let's go to settings real quick. Let me just show you show you a couple more. Let's see. You go to uh, go to your lock screen. Now you got different effects you could choose from. All right, now you already seen when I did the unboxing video, you already seen how you could do the knock code. You could do that. That's a nice, you know, customization feature for a lock screen instead of just doing a pin or, or your know, facial recognition, which is kind of whack. That, you know, never works anyway. Not to mention somebody could just open it up with a picture of you. You know what I'm saying? But you see the, the screen effects. You got light particle, vector, mosaic, and soda. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate all of these, but these are definitely hot. Definitely nice little, you know, nice little animations. I like, oh, I'm all about nice animations and all that. Let's look at the weather real quick. Weather animations look nice on this. To me, I like HTC animations better, but this is this is probably second best. Now, I just put some random cities in there just so you can see some of the animations. You got the rain. Sunny day over there. You got thunderstorms. You know, nice weather animations. Everything is customizable. Even the bottom buttons are customizable. Now... If you see, I got mine that I can, if I want, I can just press that button and take it straight to notifications instead of having to do the drop down. You got your multitasking, which um, multitasking on this is a go. Now look at this with the multitasking real quick. Let me dry my hand off a little bit. Multitasking real quick. When you pinch the zoom, you see how now you can have just the standard apps that was open like that. Or you can pinch the zoom and have multiple apps open. You know, actual cards showing everything. That was open. All right, so that's a good look right there. I also have it set up. Hit one button, take me to split screen. Then I have my home button. When you go to your Google Now, this is LG's version. So once you swipe over, it's going to take you straight to your notepad. Did I? Okay, let's go to the notepad. Okay, dear. Yeah. Okay, so it opened up. I wasn't looking at the top. But a notepad. It comes right over your um your home screen. Alright, so you got a notepad right there. Then if you go to the other side, it takes you to your LG voice command. What time is it? Now of course I like Google now better than all these other ones. And like I said, my internet's going mad slow in here, so it is what it is. Matter of fact, did I even turn my Wi-Fi on? Let's try that again. What time is it? It's 5.57 p.m., July 22nd. Personally, I prefer Google now, but 
it is what it is. All right, so the UI on this is fully customizable. You could play with so much stuff on this. It's almost like having, it's almost like having a custom ROM, but not as much, but way more customizable than a stock HTC and a stock Galaxy phone. Way more stuff you could do. You, you see how even when you when you swipe through pages, you see I got it like this where the next page kind of fades in and, and pops up. You could change that if you want. You could change that if you want. So that's a good look right there. Like I said, fully customizable. Next, let's talk about gestures. Now this phone definitely has a bunch of gestures to it. You've seen the knock code for unlocking. When you want to open the phone, double tap. Same thing to turn it off. But like I said, you got to have a spot that doesn't have an app there to turn it off. Now I got this also set up where if you tap three times, it gives you a third zoom. That's just my personal preference. But you know, you, you can turn that off and on. Also, when the phone is off, if you hold down on the volume button, it'll take you straight to your camera. And the same thing, if you hold up on the volume button, it'll take you straight to your notepad. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is you can't change that up. I would have liked to have, when I hold up, it maybe take me straight to Instagram or something that I use all day, but take you to the notepad. Now, the notepad is cool. There's no S Pen, but if you're just taking down a quick number, you could do it neat if you want, you know, in your own handwriting, you'll be able to recognize it. Whatever, it is what it is. Next, now let's talk about the lag factor. Now, I read all the comments for all the videos I do. I read every single comment. I hear a lot of people talking about the HTC, I mean the um, LG phone lags. Now, me personally, I've only had minimal lag. And that's when I, when I got 10 applications running in the background, doing split screen, you know, downloading something at the same time, I've had a little bit of lag. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most lag, 1 being no lag, I would say this phone lags at about maybe a maybe a 1 to a 2. Minimum, minimum lag. 99% of the time, no lag on this phone. 99% of the time, everything works. So on the lag factor on this, no lag. Now, like I said, you have to remember that I'm using a tempered glass screen protector. So I'm losing some of my touch sensitivity, and not to mention, I'm sitting under these bright lights, and I'm definitely hot as balls under here. So I'm definitely sweating a little bit. So my phone, my, my screen is a little bit sticky. So I'm a little bit hot. But on regular use, you get zero lag, and you get a lot of screen responsivity. <laughs> That's my word. I coined that word, right? responsivity. And last but not least, y'all know I always got to talk about the floss factor. Now, what's the floss factor? When you pull this phone out, and somebody comes out and they got their one plus one or somebody got their m8 somebody got their galaxy s5 like this one somebody got their note somebody got their iphone when all these phones hit the table and you're at the bar you're at dinner you know at dinner everybody put their phone on the table when all these phones hit the table does your phone stand out does your phone look like a boss is your phone a boss or when somebody you know when you pull your phone out and somebody pulls out their phone do you have to slide your phone to the side do you have to fall back a little bit well to me the false factor on this is a definite definite on a scale of one to ten now, i'll use a number on this one on a scale of one to ten the floss factor on this i give it a nine all right this phone has a huge floss factor to it especially the gold version you know it just looks extra gold and shimmery it looks nice not to mention you know it's not like a galaxy phone that you pull out everybody got a galaxy phone everybody got an iphone you know this is a phone that's you know i wouldn't say rare but it's not as common as everything on the market right now. So when you pull out your G3 right now, and somebody looks at it from the back, the gold joint, you can see the buttons on the back. You see it looks like two cameras, even though this is a laser. It just has a nice flossy look to it. So floss factor on this, I give it a 9. When you pull this phone out, nobody's really shutting you down. Now, somebody pull out their M8. Yeah, you could be able to have a nice argument on which phone has better speakers, which phone is better with this, which phone is better with that. But the point is, you're not getting shut down. All right. Now you pull out the M, you pull out your Galaxy. I mean your uh, LG G3, and somebody pulls out a One Plus One. Guess what? You're shutting them down. All right. Your phone could do everything their phone could do plus ten times more. So they out of here. You know that that's what that's what I look at when you pull out two things. That, you know two devices together. What phone? What can this one do? What can that one do? What can they do together? Now everything you could do on your One Plus One, you could do on your G3. 
but everything you can do on your G3, you can't do on the OnePlus One, so that way, this phone is out of here. Now, you could say that with the M8 because there's no multitasking with the split screen like that, but when you got the front, speaking, front, the front facing speakers that's mad loud, you know, that makes up for it. So, there's, you know, it's going to be a, a good phone war. If you're having phone wars with your boy, you know, when you're outside getting right and you're arguing about phones, the LG G3 is a good phone, all right? Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving this phone a definite win. Is it my favorite Android phone out right now? I got to say no. If I, if I had a choice, if I had to pick one, would I get the LG G3 or would I get the HTC M8? I would go with the M8. Why? Because the M8 has the speakers on the front that sound way better. And, you know, for me, I'm into music and listening to videos all day. So, watching videos and listening to music and all that. So, the speakers on the front is a huge deal for me. That might not be a big deal for you. You might use Bluetooth speakers. You might use in-ears, you know, earbuds. You might not be a big multimedia person. So, that might not be a big deal. But for me, the speakers on the front is a huge deal. Not to mention, I'm a, I'm a build guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I like build quality on phones, so I, I like the build quality. And one thing about the HTC M8 is when it comes to the lag factor, there's zero, zero lag. This is the closest you could get to an iPhone experience. Now, in cats that don't use iPhones, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But anybody who uses iPhones know that you don't deal with lag. The M8, is to me, is the only Android phone in the market right now that I use that has 0% lag, and the phone has never lagged on me yet. Now, in the comments, your HTC, you might have had issues with yours. Maybe you had some buggy software or whatever. But me and a lot of people I know, when you got your M8, you have zero lag. You know what I'm saying? And that's important to me. You know, when I open my phone, I want my phone to open immediately. I don't want no hiccups when I'm scrolling side to side. Yeah, it might not have the fancy effects in transitions like this, you know, when you're scrolling side to side. But there's no lag and no hiccups, no problems. All right, so right now, my I if I had to pick my top three Android phones, I would say HTC M8, number one. Galaxy Note 3. Number two, because of the S Pen. You know, I use my S Pen all the time, so Note 3 because of the S Pen. And after that, believe it or not, the LG G3. Then I would pick my Galaxy S5. The X5, the, the S5 has a lot of lag to it here and there, even though it has the, you know, probably the best camera. It has a you know, shitload of features, but this phone has a lot of lag to it. This phone lags and hiccups all the times. A lot of times I'm resetting this phone. It is what it is. Then I'll pick the OnePlus One, if I had to. <laughs> I'll probably pick a bunch of other phones before the OnePlus One. Then, of course, my iPhone. That's, you know, that's a different story. So my top three Android phones in this order right here. Now, I know a lot of y'all saying, oh, I thought you hated LG and this and that, whatever. Video's over, by the way. All right, that's the video. This is just for my hardcore subscribers and hardcore cast that want to know what I'm talking about. A lot of people ask me, you know, they, they think I hated LG. But you got to remember, shout out to my man Alfonso, we both got the LG Optimus at the same time. He got his, I got mine, he lives in California, you know, we was going through back and forth messaging and all that. When I got the LG Optimus, I hated that phone. That phone was lagging so much that that kind of scarred me from LG. Now, there's an old saying, you know, you're only as good as your last product. A lot of y'all think that I'm an HTC fanboy or I'm a Samsung fanboy, look at my old videos. There was a time that, remember back in the days, the Samsung Instinct? That was my favorite phone when it came out. Then when Samsung came out with the Epic, the Galaxy Epic, I hated Samsung. I couldn't stand Samsung. Same thing, when HTC came out with the original OG Evo, I was team HTC all day. Then when they came out with the Evo 3D, I was like, yo, HTC fell off. And basically, we thought HTC was going out of business. Y'all remember that? When the, when the Evo LTE came out? Yeah, I gave it a shot and all that, but at the same time, that's when the Galaxy came out, the, the next series of Galaxies, that when the Galaxy S2 came out, that put Samsung back on the map, and that made me start liking Samsung again. Until then, right before that, when, when Epic was out, I hated Samsung. So like I said, you're only as good as your last product. So even though the last LG phone I had was that G Flex, and I really wasn't feeling that, well, this is their last product, the G3. So they redeemed themselves. In my opinion, I'm definitely Team LG again. I would definitely recommend this to somebody who's getting ready to buy it. If they say which is better, this or the M8, my personal opinion, I'll say M8. But personally, I say you can't go wrong with either one. On the scale of one to ten, the G3 is a good cop. It's a win. It's definitely a go.
Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hit me up on Voxer. And special shout out to everybody rock with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. It's your boy Floss. I'm going to catch up with y'all on the next trip. Now look, I was about to do um, 1 plus 1 uh, real review today. Let me know. I'm, maybe I will do it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not really feeling that phone that much. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really feeling it. But I'll, I'll do the real review because a lot of cats, you know, want to see it. But matter of fact, I'll save that for the one plus one video. We'll talk about that <laughs> in, in a minute. Also, a lot of cats been hitting me up saying that they want to um, rock with me on Instagram, but they can't find the gram. Go to my YouTube homepage. There's a link right to my Instagram. This is it right here also. It's Flossy underscore Carter. All right. That's the Instagram. Now, this is the part of the video that we all been waiting for. Fellas, ladies, put the drinks down, clear your throat, put the little kids out the room, and say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, go eat a fucking dick. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces.